Good evening, everyone. Welcome to series number 143 of the Africa Healthcare Network Fireside Chat Series. It is my pleasure this evening to welcome Professor Lucia Delvecchio, who is the Chair Department of Nephrology and Dialysis at the St. Anna Hospital at the Azienda Socio Sanitaria Territoriale in Como, Italy. Professor Delvecchio has scientific interests, including anemia and its therapy, which includes iron, erythropoietin stimulating agents, and hypoxia inducible factor prolyl hydroxylase inhibitors, also in cardiovascular risk and CKD progression, nutrition, glomerular nephritis, diabetic nephropathy. And during the years, she has collaborated in several randomized, contro uh, randomized controlled uh, clinical trials in the field of anemia of CKD, GM, and diabetic nephropathy as a sub investigator or a principal investigator. She has been a member of the European Renal Best Practice Group of the European Dialysis and Transplantation Association and the European Renal Association, and she's also a part of the steering committee of the working group of the Eureka, which is the European group, the European Working Group on Renal and Cardiovascular Medicine of the KDGO, of the, of the European Renal Association and the EDTA. Recently, she has been a member of the steering committee of the KDGO Controversies Conference of the HIF-PH inhibitors. In addition to short communications as an abstract forms to the national and international meetings, at the moment she has contributed to nearly 240 publications on scientific journals. With that introduction, I would also like to thank the KDGO to collaborate, uh, for collaborating with AHN for providing us with this wonderful talk ahead. So Professor Delvecchio, the floor is all yours. Welcome. Good evening, everybody. It's my pleasure to give this webinar this afternoon, following this invi invitation from AHA. And uh, I wasn't very aware about uh, dialysis organization in Africa overall, so it's a good opportunity for me to discover a new world. And uh, I share my desktop. The topic of today will be uh, novel anemia therapy in uh, CKD. Why? Anemia treatment is still a, uh, an unmet need in patients with chronic disease. This is true in uh, Europe, uh, United States, uh, because uh, despite available treatment, many patients are still left uh, with uh, anemia of different degrees, and some of them uh, are not given treatment if uh, they would be entitled off. The situation is even worse uh, in Africa, uh, where, for uh, several other reasons, there are contributing factors to anemia other than CKD, and uh, possibilities to treatment are less available than in Europe or United States. This is a, an, an interesting uh, epidemiological study just published this year on Lancet hematology. It uh, describes the, the global distribution of anemia causes worldwide, from 1990 to 2021 for males and females. As you can see on the, on the left males, females, you can see that uh, the first case uh, worldwide for anemia is iron deficiency. And I know that for Africa, this is a, a really, very really disaster, especially for children. But if you go on up with age, you can see the appearance of another important cause of anemia, that is chronic kidney disease. And it becomes very, very important for elderly people over 80. But what about anemia prevalence in Africa? Well, I find I just want, don't want too much to enter in the topic because if not, we are getting too long. But uh, I selected two studies just as an example. This is a, a cross-sectional study of a teaching hospital in Ethiopia. And uh, they described 150 patients. 64% uh, of them were male. Half of them more or less were at the stage 5 CKD. And uh, nearly 80% of them have a CKD duration of less than one year, probably reflecting a high degree of late referral and uh, to sort of add proteinuria. If we look at the prevalence of anemia in this population, we can see that only 15% of the patient had no anemia, whereas one third had mild anemia, 40% had moderate anemia, and uh, 16% of them had severe anemia. This is another study, again, coming from Ethiopia, from the Gondar Hospital in the northwest of the country. 
and they enrolled in 251 patients attending their clinics with different stages of CKD. One fourth of them at CKG stage, uh, stage five. And again, you can see that the prevalence of anemia increases as CKD progresses. This is already well known from the literature, but uh, you can see that a stage five, uh, more uh, nearly uh, almost all the patients had a diagnosis of anemia. But what about their treatment? Well, we can see that uh, just 42 person of the pa 42 patients, 16 person receive anemia treatment. And uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, anemia status, whether present or absent, of course, patients with no anemia do not receive any treatment. Only 42 patients receive treatment despite an overall number of 120. And uh, entering the tail, half of them are treated with blood transfusion, 14 with hematinics only, three. Uh, blood transfusion and hematinics, and only six uh, are treated with erythropoietic stimulating agent. Another important information is that the odds of being anemic and probably untreated were three times higher in rural residents as compared to patients living in cities. But why we have to treat anemia? Well, for three important reasons. First of all, to decrease uh, the risk and the need for blood transfusion. Second, to improve quality of life. And this is particularly true for patients who are, who are starting from a degree of very severe anemia. In that case, treating anemia can really make the difference. And uh, third, uh, improve the outcome. This is more controversial because uh, um, it's under debate whether correction, correcting anemia um, to our partial, uh, with partial, uh, let's say, and complete level till uh, hemoglobin level uh, between 10 and 12 can really make the difference. For sure, it can make the difference on the cardiovascular well-being if we correct anemia from severe status. What do we have? We have ESA molecules. There are several molecules. We have recombinant human erythropoietin and long-acting ESA, such as darbepoietin alpha and sera and biosimilars of epoetin alpha and also now of darbepoetin alpha. All erythropoietin stimulating agents act on the same way. They all stimulate erythropoiesis by activating the apoe receptor. However, these molecules are not all the same and for different reasons. The larger the molecule, the longer the half-life and of course, uh, uh, the possibility of increasing the administration frequency, the lower the receptor affinity, the longer the administration frequency, the better stability at room temperature. It means that with a long acting agent, you can leave at least one, only one time the drug outside the fridge for one week, and the lower the influence on administration route on those needs. This means that if you give a given dose uh, to a patient, uh, you do not have increases the dose because uh, you give it subcutaneously. But are we happy about it? No, no, because uh, as we said, many people, many persons are still anemic and uh, several studies uh, pointed out that is a treatment could imply an increased risk of cardiovascular uh, thrombotic events in patients, especially those who are inflamed and receiving ESA treatment and higher doses. And so uh, the researcher has tried to find a new way of treating anemia in patients with CKD. And uh, let's compare the tradition to the novelty, the new EPHD inhibitors. Well, ESA treatment has a long tradition, more than 30 years of availability worldwide. And on the contrary, if the GDV has just been released on the market. In general, both uh, classes are effective in correcting anemia. They both uh, reduce the need for blood transfusion. Uh, ESA are endogenous stimulator of the EPO receptor. Uh, conversely, if the GDV act by stimulating uh, the synthesis of endogenous erythropoietin. 
they differ for the administration uh, route, that is, ESA are administered with the parenteral route, whereas if the inhibitors are administered orally, and uh, for safety experts that we will look at more in depth after the presentation. Uh, possibly if the gene inhibitors are, uh, could uh, uh, increase the iron availability, being more, more effective in flame patient and have an effect on lipids. And um, is a treatment need a cold chain. As we said, the if the gene inhibitor uh, act by activating the if system, and as a consequence, they increase the synthesis of endogenous erythropoietin. They are an antianemic drugs. They differ from available erythropoiesis stimulating agents because they are not, they do not need the technique of recombinant DNA for the production, but they are synthetic molecules. So it means that in the medium and long term, they, they have the possibility to be of being produced at lower prices in compared to ESAs and become more affordable, we hope. They are given orally and they are stored at room temperature. Uh, what about the physiology of the if system that brought to the synthesis of these drugs? Of course, we are not entering to the tail. However, if our transcriptional factor that uh, uh, control and orchestrate the response of the body to the uh, oxygen content in the air and in tissues. Uh, the possible inducible factor uh, alpha subnuted uh, stability is regulated by this enzyme, PhD, uh, PhD1, PhD2, PhD3. Uh, if the inhibitors act by reducing the activity of these enzymes, and uh, avoiding the, the um, destruction of uh, if subunits that become available to uh, heterosimerize with the beta subunit and activate several genes. Among these genes, we have the synthesis of erythropoietin and an action of uh, several genes, including those uh, regulating our absorption from the, the intestine and uh, reducing uh, epigenin production in the liver. Overall, the final result increases erythropoiesis. But apart from that, the if system has several other effects in other parts of the body. So it can influence mitochondrial function, angiogenesis, lipid metabolism, uh, cellular metabolism, the fat tissues. They have a role in the immune and uh, native and acquired immunity on inflammation and uh, every, uh, more than that. What are the possible advantages of this new class of drugs? Well, given that they stimulate the production of endogenous erythropoietin, they uh, expose patients to uh, lower levels of circulating erythropoietin. And considering that the safety concerns on either therapy were particularly present for those patients who are treated at high doses, we, this could be a theoretical advantage. Second, they are more possibly more effective in inflamed patients. So in the, in the so-called category of patients with uh, hyperresponsive uh, anemia to erythropoietin. They possibly uh, increase iron utilization. They cause uh, some molecule, but not all, uh, decrease uh, serum LDL cholesterol. This goes together also with a decrease of HDL cholesterol, and they are given by the oral route. Uh, at the moment, there are six molecules of the class available worldwide. Roxadostat, Daprodostat, Vadadostat, who, under, and who underwent a large um, clinical development worldwide, and then Molidostat, Inaladostat, Desidostat, who underwent smaller phase three uh, studies. What is the approval status of these molecules? Molidostat and Aradostat desidostat are available for clinical use only in countries with less stringent um, approval regulation. Uh, Japan, China, Korea, Chile, and India. Uh, Roxadostat, which I just read, here, has been approved from uh, for clinical use in South Africa, has been uh, approved for clinical use in dialysis and on dialysis patients in Europe, 
but is not approved by the FDA. The product study uh, received uh, approval for clinical use for dialysis, both by EMA and FDA. However, the pharmaceutical company decided of not commercialize the drug in Europe. And finally, Vadadustat was not approved by the FDA and received approval for, by EMA just for dialysis patients. In uh, 2021, KDIGO organized this conference uh, regarding novel anemia therapy in CKD. Unfortunately, the conference was held virtually. It, uh, it was preceded by the, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, a long debate on when and where doing the conference that was supposed to be in Berlin, but unfortunately, because of COVID-19, in the end, uh, no other solutions they make it virtually. The objective of the concert was to put together a global panel of experts in the field, nephrology, cardiologists, pediatricians, pharmacologists, and also patient representatives to identify key issues relevant to the novel anemia therapy. The goal was to determine best practice and area of uncertainty in the treatment of anemia, uh, addressing ongoing controversial issues around the, surrounding these new drugs and identify uh, uh, topics for uh, um, future guidelines in the field. This is the paper that uh, summarizing uh, what was uh, discussed and agreed during the conference. It was published on Kidder International in September of this year. And uh, I want now to present a brief summary of uh, this document that uh, I have been uh, the chance of being a co-author and also because I have the chance of being part of the conference in 2021. Well, let's start from uh, uh, what uh, do we have as uh, um, scientific evidence at the time of the conference. At that time, more than 50 randomized studies were published with EFPG inhibitors for the six molecules. However, uh, as we said before, only three molecules under, underwent uh, a large phase three clinical development, including 20,000 pa 20, patients worldwide. The studies were divided according to whether enrolled patients with uh, non-dialysis or dialysis, and uh, the drugs were uh, Roxadustat, Vadadustat, Daprodustat. As you, you can see, in non-dialysis, Roxadustat used as a main comparator the placebo. The other two molecules uh, use a comparator, darbepoetin alpha. For dialysis patients, for Roxadustat use a poetin alpha or diapoetin alpha in Europe, but that will start to use darbepoetin alpha as a comparator. And finally, the produce start to use a, both a poetin alpha and darbepoetin alpha. As you can see, uh, trial design that were set by regulatory agencies, that is EMA and FDA, were not the same across molecules with uh, different hemoglobin targets anyway, all going between 10 and 12, and using different non-inferiority margin for maize risk, ranging between 1.3 and 1.2 for the Pradostat. Uh, the first important thing when you have a new drug is to understand whether the drug is effective or not, and uh, how we uh, assess efficacy for a, an anti-anemic drug, it's obvious. We have to look at an increase in, in uh, hemoglobin levels. And um, if uh, we look at non-dialysis patients, many patients in non-dialysis were is naive and started with uh, hemoglobin level below 10 grams for deciliters. And as expected, we, uh, uh, Roxadostat, in comparison to placebo, obtained significant increase in hemoglobin level, ranging, ranging between 1.9 and to compare to placebo that obtain small a uh, mild effect. In dialysis patient, uh, sorry, this is our uh, non-dialysis studies using a comparator, darbepoetin alpha. In these studies, patients were either as a naive or already treated with ASA. In this case, we do not expect a significant difference in effect since this 
where studies were designed for non-inferiority. And you can see that the hemoglobin increase were comparable between uh, um, the IFPG inhibitors and the control uh, molecule in uh, for, for uh, roxadostat, vadadostat, and daprodostat. This is uh, the situation for dialysis patient. And uh, again, the uh, amount of the increase uh, depend on whether the patient were correcting their anemia or were just maintaining their hemoglobin level. And again, you can see that the effect was comparable between the IFPG inhibitor and uh, the comparator drug. And this is the conclusion of uh, the KDGO committee around efficacy. There were general consensus that IFPG inhibitors are superior to placebo and non-inferior to ESAS in increasing and maintaining hemoglobin concentration in, among CKD patients, both on non-dialysis and in dialysis. The important hemoglobin response was dose dependent, as it is the case also for ESAS therapy, and uh, differing between agent and protocol and also was influenced by the starting dose that was used for the comparison. And for this reason, some agents uh, compared to the other uh, obtain a much sharper increase of the morgan level, especially at the beginning. And this was particularly true for Roxadostat. And uh, looking and, uh, at uh, one of the important reasons why we treat uh, anemia, that is uh, the risk of blood transfusion, we can, uh, following um, the, the analysis of all the study, the group uh, concluded that the rate of blood transfusion were similar among patients receiving IPD versus ESAS, and uh, uh, a lower rate in comparison to placebo. And uh, what about the optimal hemoglobin target? Well, as uh, I've already presented you in a previous slide, uh, the randomized clinical trial we are uh, designed with the same hemoglobin target that the one which is recommended from uh, um, current guideline on anemia. For this reason, there is no evidence to suggest a different hemoglobin target for these uh, new drugs. And this is, was the conclusion of the KDGO Executive Committee. And um, there are just uh, small data coming from Japan, from small studies that use an hemoglobin target uh, till 13, but these studies were not uh, powered to assess cardiovascular safety at higher target. The general consensus was then that available data do not provide a rationale for targeting higher hemoglobin level with HPD inhibitors than the current recommended targets established using ESAS. And uh, well, we said uh, previously, that uh, according to the mechanism of action on of IFPD inhibitors, uh, this new treatment have uh, the potential to improve iron availability because it uh, supposed to increase iron absorption and uh, by decreasing epsidin level, increase iron iron availability from uh, uh, existing stores. Data from clinical trials suggests that IFPD inhibitors may modulate iron metabolism. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, changes in iron parameter were observed in uh, the majority of the studies, even with uh, some differences. However, the interpretation of these findings is made complex by the fact that no study has been designed primarily to test uh, the effect on uh, iron parameters and iron therapy. For this reason, uh, uh, iron therapy was not standardized in the trials, and uh, not all the studies included patients who were iron, uh, iron, uh, uh, satisfying iron uh, levels. But some of the studies, especially with Roxado stat, included also patients who were random deficient. And uh, even more importantly, some of the study also use different treatment policy for iron, depending on uh, the experimental or the control group. Overall, for this reason, uh, there was general consensus that uh, IPGD therapy uh, seems to improve iron availability, but uh, it doesn't seem enough to completely eliminate the need for iron replacement, especially in dialysis patients. 
And a particular note uh, of, uh, was stressed that iron deficiency should be anyway avoided as it was with ESA because iron deficiency could increase the thrombotic risk in, uh, in patients. And uh, following the conference, uh, several meta-analyses were published. Among them, uh, an interesting one was just published a couple of months ago uh, of uh, a meta-analysis of 26 randomized clinical trials of over 200 uh, to um, 2,400,000 patients. And uh, the meta-analysis, the aim of the meta-analysis was to uh, study the, um, the behavior of, of iron parameters in uh, dialysis, non-dialysis patient. And you can see that overall, uh, if the inhibitors are more effective than ESA in reducing serum epsidin and in uh, reducing serum ferritin. According to the consensus of the conference, it was said that uh, there was a significant effect in reducing uh, serum transferring. Said that, uh, as you can see from this slide, uh, it's true that there is a significant effect in reduced dose needs favoring IP inhibitors. However, if you look here on the right, you can see that the effect is just 3.1 milligram every week. So this effect cannot be defined as clinically significant. And uh, what about quality of life? As we said at the beginning, quality of life is an important reason to treat anemia in CKD. Uh, this, however, this has been always uh, a difficult topic and uh, scientific research have always had difficulties in demonstrating that is a treatment improve quality of life, despite a clear perception that this is, of course, in everyday clinical practice from patients and also what uh, as a Phoenician uh, we can um, see every day. And uh, during the phase three clinical development, several large trials also included the assessment of quality of life as exploratory or secondary endpoints. However, uh, no significant difference were observed on quality of life in comparison to placebo or to other ASAs. Uh, the only uh, positive data were shown by the Olympus trial, which uh, uh, show an improvement in quality of life in comparison to placebo in non-dialysis patients, and also in the Ascend and uh, HQ trial using the Prodostat in patients with uh, um, non-dialysis. Uh, in comparison versus placebo again. However, the higher vitality score was mild. And another point to consider for quality of life is certain, uh, certainly oral administration. Indeed, oral administration could be perceived as a significant advantage from a certain category of patients, especially those who are not receiving dialysis. Is a hyperresponsiveness is among the unmet clinical needs of uh, ESA therapy. And um, there was there were a great expectation on this point, uh, given that, uh, as we said, uh, if the inhibitors can decrease the epsidon level and thus theoretically be more effective in treating ESA, nice ESA hyperresponsive patient in comparison to ESAs. Uh, however, until now, data on the effect of IPD inhibitors on ESA hyper response are limited. And um, are, uh, from uh, available data from randomized clinical trials, it is difficult to obtain a definitive answer because uh, uh, patients who had severe inflammation or consistent hyper response were, as a matter of fact, excluded from uh, the trials because of the um, design. And however, preliminary data suggests that. Uh, even a higher dose of ESAs are needed for patients with high C-reactive protein, the same may not be true for uh, IPD inhibitors. And uh, I just want to show uh, this uh, secondary analysis of uh, combined trials with Roxadostat uh, in dialysis patient, which has been presented as an abstract at the last Eredithia Congress in Milan this year. And these are... Uh, 
Roxadustat those need according to baseline CRP levels at high sensitive uh, divided in quintiles. And you can see that uh, patients on the different quintiles have more or less the same dose need for Roxadustat with comparable hemoglobin levels. On the contrary, if you look at uh, ESA doses, you can see that there is a, a trend, mild trend, tower, uh, possibly uh, tower, uh, an increase dose need for a patient who are more inflamed. And uh, what about cardiovascular outcome? This is, was a great expectation for these drugs because, as we said before, is a therapy can increase cardiovascular risk, especially in patients who are hyperresponsive. And um, however, all the studies were uh, designed for meeting non-inferiority in comparison to placebo or the comparator ASA. And uh, all the studies in dialysis met non-inferiority. The same was not true for non-dialysis since uh, uh, the PROTEX study using Vadadustat in comparison to Darbepoetin alpha uh, was uh, met inferiority. That is to say that Vadadustat showed a higher cardiovascular risk profile compared to Darbepoetin alpha. And uh, how, what was that? This is uh, the, the, primary, um, the primary result of the study showing an increased hazard ratio 1.17 against Vadadustat. The higher risk was observed uh, in Vadadus Crad was due to uh, an excess of non-fatal myocardial infarction and uh, higher incidence of death from non-cardiovascular causes. And, uh, however, the study has a different point that make puzzling the interpretation. Indeed, it was found that uh, the hazard ratio had a different behavior in different population. If we look at patients living in the United States, we can see that the hazard ratio is neutral with uh, non-inferiority for uh, Vadadustat in comparison to Darbepoetin alpha. Conversely, if we look at the non-US population, we can clearly see that there is an increased hazard ratio uh, against Vadadustat. And uh, different hypotheses were made trying to understand uh, this difference possible different comorbidities of enrolled population, different treatment policies of treatment social demographic factor in different countries, different demographic target. This is true because uh, uh, in, in the United States, a lower demographic target was used in comparison to outside the United States. However, it should be noted that the demographic target was the same for Vadadustat as for Darbepoetin alpha. Uh, recently, a uh, secondary analysis of this study has been published, including just patients uh, where he's a naive uh, at treatment start. Uh, 1,000 were from the United States, 139 from Europe, 500 outside the United States and Europe. And uh, full analysis of this data set confirmed an increased risk of MACE against Vadadostat compared to the Bepoetin alpha. The difference, the risk was much higher if we select the population of patients who are not living in the United States and not in, Euro in Europe. Uh, many uh, patients from this group came from Brazil or uh, South Africa. And uh, this is in interesting because uh, uh, in this population, a higher rate, rate for non-cardiovascular death, death predominantly attributable to kidney failure was observed, possibly suggesting that uh, the fact that uh, dialysis treatment was not available for everybody as in other countries could have influenced the fundings. If we look at the uh, patient living in Europe, you can see that as a ratio was uh, even uh, favoring uh, darbepoetin alpha. Of course, uh, the sample size is rather small. Another signal on cardiovascular safety came from the ASCEND and the trial, comparing the Pradustat to Darbepoetin alpha in nearly 4,000 patients. As a primary analysis, a study showed non-inferiority, 
However, on treatment analysis showed a higher index of maize in the product group compared to the darbeprotein alpha group. And this is the reason why the, the drug was not approved for inpatient on non-dialysis. And these are the conclusion of the KDGO participant with a general view that variable results have been reported for different EPD inhibitors and for different study settings, depending on the type of analysis being performed, intention to treat or on, on, uh, on, on treatment analysis. Major randomized clinical trials have failed to demonstrate that EPD inhibitors are non inferior to placebo or conventional ESAs or con for conventional, for cardiovascular outcome in patient not on dialysis. Uh, what are the potential explanation? Imbalances in patient characteristics, as we see before for uh, the project study, different geographic location, and not much interface of follow-up uh, between patient receiving experimental treatment or the control group. And uh, well, there are other safety considerations to be made for EPD inhibitors. First, that uh, the administration of these drugs could be associated with a higher risk of thrombotic events compared to the administration of ESAS or placebo. Another uh, point of uh, reflection is the cancer risk. Among the wide effect of uh, EPD inhibition and uh, the stimulation of the E system is uh, a possible increase of vascular endothelial growth factor. Uh, Preliminary data did not show significant increase of, of these molecules. However, particular attention was put in this trial for monitoring an excess of uh, cancer risk. Uh, this was uh, observed just uh, in, uh, as a small signal in the ASCEND and the trial with the Prodostat and in a trial in Japan with Mordostat. Uh, however, a uh, probably longer uh, observation is needed for this uh, safety point. Another um, point of caution should come for uh, the fact that uh, in patients receiving roxadostat in on dialysis, uh, had a twofold increase in uh, the risk of sepsis and septic shock. Uh, the reason for that is still little understandable, and however, because it's uh, only strong signal and is not confirmed with other molecules. However, we have to remember that uh, the IF system can also influence inflammation and the immune system. Retinopathy, it was another point of uh, to be, uh, be careful about, since, uh, as we know, that vascular endothelial growth factor should also influence uh, the, the pro proliferation of, the, um, of uh, diabetic retinopathy. Uh, at the moment, no significant worsening of diabetic retinopathy have, we, have been observed with PD inhibitors. And finally, it is recommended of not used in patients with polycystic kidney disease. This, uh, these drugs uh, have been shown to uh, increase uh, cyst grow in experimental models. And what about clinical practice? Well, in Italy, the drug has just arrived, so the experience in everyday clinical practice is still limited. However, we have experience from clinical trials. This, uh, me and uh, some colleagues of mine have been uh, uh, we, we are uh, investigators in uh, the big trials that I've shown you before, and we had the chance to use these drugs in our patient. I just want to bring you one small case. Uh, this uh, was the story of Gianni, an Italian patient from Pavia. Uh, he's 82 years old, and in his medical history, we have um, the occurrence of atrial fibrillation more than 20 years ago, together with hypertension. When he was uh, 66 years old, uh, he developed a transitory ischemic attack. And uh, because of his, his hypertension and vascular disease, uh, uh, he had a worsening in, in his heart condition, needing the placement of pacemaker when he was 74. And at 79, uh, he had a diagnosis of dilated cardiomyopathy. And uh, together with that, when he was 81, he received a diagnosis of uh, uh, chronic kidney disease with a serum creatinine of 2.4 and the EGFR 24. 
and uh, more or less in the same period, uh, anemia was detected with hemoglobin level between 8.8 .8, together with uh, uh, ferritin uh, of 100 and uh, reduced uh, transfer in saturation. It was started, Roxadustat, at the starting dose of 70 milligram three times a week. And you'd obtain good results with hemoglobin levels uh, above 11 grams per deciliter without significant side effects. This is the graphical representation, representation of the, the trend. Unfortunately for him, at a certain point, the trial ended, and together with the trial, he had to stop Roxadostat. After a while, as expected, his hemoglobin levels decreased, and he was started uh, treatment with uh, an appointed alpha biosimilar. Unfortunately, uh, the drug was not as effective as Roxadostat, and uh, uh, he had he under went a uh, progressive increase in the dose, but it remained hyper-responsive. And the experience from clinical practice. Well, in the, uh, we have a new class of drugs. We have seen that it is effective as ESAs. We have seen that its safety uh, is not perfect as ESA. And we have to decide to whom we want to prescribe use this new class. The fittest, the sickest, this is a difficult decision. Because uh, if I want to start a new drugs, uh, probably I would start uh, with a patient with less comorbidity. However, as we have seen, patients who are hyper-responsive probably are a class of patients who would, uh, will have a great benefit from the new class of drug. The drug compliance, yes, this is important because uh, given that it's an oral treatment, if uh, we give an ESA in dialysis, we are sure that the patient take it. Uh, and however, with uh, PILS, we do not do, we don't know what the patient is going to do. Patient preferences, sometimes we have to listen to them more and uh, possibly looking for additional effect. This is a wide area of uh, investigation for the future. And um, this is a summary of the potential advantages and disadvantages uh, that was uh, put in the man in the article of uh, the Kidigo conference, and well, potential advantages of uh, PFPG inhibitors, and we we have said that oral dosing could be more convenient for some patients, but uh, it could expose to difficult uh, less adherence. If the inhibitors may facilitate anemia treatment in patients who are non-dialysis, and uh, they may improve the utilization of iron for erythropoiesis, particularly for oral iron, maybe a, a more effective in patients with uh, chronic inflammation. And uh, uh, however, given that uh, they are oral, they could expose patients also to drug-drug interaction or uh, we have to deal with the fact that we have less clinical experience, potential risk of worsening retinopathy. And uh, with that, with that I, ask, uh, I want to thank you for the attention. And uh, I know that Africa is a beautiful con continent, very, very big, with very, very different in the countries and cultures. And uh, however, I live also in a beautiful place, so I want to conclude with a photo of my of the place where I live that is uh, Como Lake. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, Professor Del Vecchio. That was such an engaging presentation. Uh, it was very interesting to listen to. Uh, I would like to invite questions from the panel. You can just go ahead and unmute yourselves and uh, ask Professor the questions that you have. Uh, the chat boxes, both the chat boxes are also open. I see there's a question in the Q&A chat box that I will ask very soon. Professor Del Vecchio, we have a question from Giddy in the Q&A chat, uh, chat box, and he's asking uh, concerning the use of uh, ESAs uh, and the risk of thromboembolism. So is it feasible and scientifically acceptab acceptable to prescribe anticoagulants to these patients as a prophylaxis? I, I don't know. There is no reason. Uh, there is uh, no evidence for that because uh, we know that uh, anticoagulant therapy can decrease the thrombotic risk, but also expose patients to an increased risk of bleeding. So uh, we don't know if uh, the balance between pro and contra is 
could favor the adding of uh, an anticoagulant therapy just for preventing a possible thrombotic risk with ESA. I think that uh, probably the balance is against it is, since the uh, patient with CKD has already uh, already have an increased risk of bleeding in general with anticoagulant therapy. So we have to limit uh, the, the use to very, very strict, more stricter indications that is atrial fibrillation or pulmonary embolism whatsoever. Thank you very much. Gordons in the, in the, in the audience has raised his hand. Uh, Gordons, I have unmuted you. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for the wonderful uh, presentation. I'm Gordons Matthew from Tanzania obesity activist in Tanzania. So I would like you to brief me if there is any study in Tanzania or any proof of that SS in Tanzania. Uh, have you ever done? Uh, could you repeat the question, please? Uh, I'm asking, uh, I am anti-obesity activist in Tanzania. So I, I would like to know if there's, there is any work uh, you have done in Tanzania or, or East Africa uh, pertaining your work. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the particular field of SAD. Yes, uh, he's asking if you've had any any research in Tanzania, any research experience in Tanzania before. I'm not aware. I don't think that if the inhibitors have been used, I'm sure that probably there exists data, observational data on the problem of anemia also in Tanzania. Uh, I didn't look at it carefully because uh, I concentrated myself more on uh, on therapy. If I understood well, I think that uh, many uh, countries in uh, Tan in uh, Africa, the situation is similar. So we were discussing with uh, the moderator bef just before uh, the start of the uh, webinar. That is, uh, there is a possibility of, of use erythropoietin therapy more for dialysis patient, but uh, patient not on dialysis do not receive uh, so much treatment for uh, anemia. And um, I think that uh, for this reason, if the inhibitors, if uh, they will become uh, available uh, at a low price, could be a good option for uh, several reasons. First, uh, because uh, according to the studies that I show you from Ethiopia, uh, the risk of being anemia is increased in, pati in patient revealing in uh, rural areas compared to cities. And uh, if we imagine that if the inhibitors do not read, uh, need cold chain, it's much, much more easier to prescribe safely a drug without uh, the need of refrigerator for a patient living outside in a rural area. And also it's uh, uh, people become more, more reachable from, uh, with an oral treatment. There is uh, experience in China with uh, Roxadostat, and uh, there are interesting observations that uh, when the drug enters in the market, it doesn't not necessarily um, took, uh, took the place of existing ESAs, but rather uh, took the place uh, uh, of, uh, let's say, the un unreached market. That is, all the patients that were not uh, available uh, uh, for treatments, that were left untreated and left severe anemics. In China, people living in a rural area are left with hemoglobin level of six, seven, eight. So there, there is a, a true a medical need. And I'm not an expert, of course, of Africa's situation, but I imagine that Africa is not so different in this perspective. I would definitely believe so. Uh, there's another question in the chat box, and this time from Ben, and he, he would like to understand why the FDA has not approved the uh, the drugs uh, in the U.S. yet. Uh, however, the European Medical Agency has. This is a, a, a different, a difficult question. Uh, from a certain point of view, I do not fully understood as well, uh, understand as well the deci decision of FDA, because the FDA set the rules, uh, decided the criteria of the trial design, and said that the, the trial design were required to prove non-inferiority for uh, uh, cardiovascular safety and, uh, and set also the non-inferiority margin. And after that, uh, they decided that even if the trial met non-inferiority, looking at secondary analysis because of a number of signals, uh, the drug was not safe. So I fully appreciate the effort to guarantee the health 
of the people, of course, but we also have to uh, realize that also ESAs are not the perfect treatment. And um, also in the patient perspective, uh, uh, patients prefer to be treated, with, uh, have, to receive a treatment for the, their anemia uh, compared to being left uh, severely anemic, anemic and uh, just receive blood transfusion. So I think we have to find a good balance between uh, uh, guaranteeing safety, but also gives the uh, people the possibility of being treated. And uh, Ima um, considered uh, uh, different trial, different data from the FDA. So this is a partial reason why there is not a concordance uh, for, uh, for approval from the two agencies. And also because they set different rules uh, for uh, the trial design. So the trial design included endpoint for FDA and employed endpoint for EMA. So they are not necessarily comparable. So this is the reason for different approval policies. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question, I think you had answered when you were showing us the case of Giovanni. However, uh, Dr. Mashuri is asking, uh, since IV iron therapy has been the mainstay in heart failure patients, would this drug be useful in heart failure patients with CKD? Um, I think that this drug could be a useful perspective in patients with heart failure. There are some scientific uh, experimental evidence suggesting that, uh, for instance, the stimulation of the E system could be beneficial in patients with uh, diabetes and heart disease. Of course, just experimental evidence, no, no clinical data. And uh, many patients with heart failure are iron deficient as well. So there could be an option to increase iron availability. This is true. However, of course, uh, uh, we have strong data indicating that uh, intravenous iron is effective in a patient with heart failure, not only just for anemia, but also for improving outcome and uh, um, physical performance. So I don't think that uh, if the inhibitors uh, uh, could be used uh, as uh, uh, the only alternative to intravenous iron. I think that uh, the evidence for intravenous iron is really so strong that it would be it will be continued to be done. Thank you very much. And uh, there's a question about uh, how this drug would interact with calcium-rich foods. It, it depends on the molecules. Uh, uh, calcium, it's not a problem. Uh, if I remember well, uh, Roxadostat has a kind of interference uh, with uh, um, phosphate bindings, so it should be given uh, uh, um, not together with uh, uh, drugs binding phosphate. And as I said before, there is a long, a long list of interests of several drugs. Of course, uh, I don't want to mention them all, and I don't know them all. For sure, another an important point for uh, interaction with drugs is uh, people, people with kidney transplantation. Indeed, uh, as a matter of fact, at the moment, there is, uh, let's say, little experience with this uh, population. First, because uh, uh, there are possible interaction with immunosuppressive drugs, and uh, the patients were not included in, uh, in the majority of the studies. And also because, as uh, I said before, the if system uh, can have, have an interference with uh, the immune system. So we don't know what we would expect in a patient with kidney transplant using this drug. There are some case reports, reporters as small. Uh, Experiences are reporting the literature with uh, no no particular problem, but just uh, in a limited experience. Thank you so much once again. And uh, Ben again has a question uh, locally uh, in Como, for example. What would the cost of uh, the PHIS be in comparison to the ESAs? Uh, I was expecting that they were uh, much more expensive. Uh, I recently discovered that. Uh, they have an intermediate cost. So they are more expensive than the biosimilar of poetin alpha, but they have a comparable price than darbepoietin alpha. So they, this makes them affordable for the system, in my opinion. But uh, we have to decide in which kind of patient we want to use them. We, I mean, we have, uh, of course, uh, 
Italy, it's uh, probably a richer country than several countries in Africa, for sure. But uh, also in Italy, there is a lot of attention on cost of drugs and on uh, whether uh, we have a more cheaper option when we prescribe a drug. So uh, if we decide to use a given drug, as in this case, if it inhibitors, we have to be aware why we want to use that compared to the cheaper option. We'll take one more question uh, from Yuri this time. And uh, he's raising a concern over the risk involved with Roxadostat uh, as far as developing sepsis and septic shock is concerned. Is there any way this is preventable if we do choose to use this drug? If I remember, uh, uh, the risk on Olympic? So Yuri's question is that if there is a twofold risk of sepsis or septic shock, with the use of oh, okay 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 sorry uh there was, um the fda published uh, a report on the safety on roxadostat summarizing all uh, uh the safety events uh, and of every kind and in this uh, safety report uh, it was uh, um, there was a signal that there was increased risk of septic shock or uh, sepsis or pneumonia in patients receiving roxadostat. Uh, I don't know because it is the only signal is that it was not confirmed with other molecules. It has to be said that the population of patients with non-dialysis that was enrolled in the roxadostat trials was a population half of the patient already at the CKD stage five. So it was a population of fragile patients. We don't know, I don't know, and there is no answer if it is truly the drug that increases this risk or just uh, by chance uh, in a population of fragile patients. We don't know yet. It's something that you have to monitor in clinical practice. Thank you so much. And uh, I know you have a busy day ahead of you, so we won't keep you for very long. Uh... I would really like to thank you on behalf of the Africa Healthcare Network, uh, Professor Delvecchio, for taking time out to be with us. And also would like to thank the KDGO for helping us uh, bring you to this forum and deliver such a high impact talk. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. And hopefully we will see you on the chat again for, for, for another interesting topic, if, if your time definitely allows you. It has been my, my pleasure to be in here with all you all. And of course, uh, I will be happy to, to give my contribution another, another time if needed. It, it would be lovely to have you again. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice evening to everybody.